In this next video, I'm gonna go through some user management basics. So what I've done here is I've logged into the system as an educator, and you'll see some of the new changes for this year to make it a little easier for you to access your students and lessons uh, and your educator code. At the very top, you have a management toolbar. This includes your educator code, it tells you the status of your account, as well as gives you quick access to your users and lessons. And if you need more information, uh, including user guides and videos, you can click this uh, info icon, which will take you to the educator's corner. Now, one of the first things you're probably going to want to know how to do as an educator is take students under management. In the previous video, we showed how students have the ability to enter their educator code into a similar blue box on their Career Hub page. Your blue box as an educator has your code, in this case, EWNSPZ. An important reminder is that your educator code is unique to you. So don't use another educator's code or else that student will fall under their management and not yours. So this is the code that you're going to want to share with your students. If I click on the code, you'll see that there are other options uh, in terms of bringing those students under management. You can either share the code and have them type it in directly, or you can actually send them a link via email or messaging system and have them click on that link and then they'll uh, approve you as an educator that they're coming under your management. So that's one way to bring students under management. Of course, there's another way to do it and that happens at the administrator level of your subscription site. Uh, and that's where an administrator would upload in bulk groups and group assignments. Uh, say you've got you know, 10 or 15 different cohorts that you're going to be using under different uh, counselors or educators. They can be uploaded in bulk and automatically you'd see your users when you clicked on users here. So I'm going to click on users and see how many of the uh, users I have right now in the system. And in the demo, you'll see that I've got 26 users under management. All right, so these students are already under my management. If I wanted to add one, I could always share my code with that new student who's come in. Or, of course, we could also ask our administrator to upload um, a new group on our behalf. All right, so this is where I see all of my students. If I want to look up an individual student, let's use the example of Dallas here. I'll type in Dallas's first name here and find them, click on their name, and here they are. So here's Dallas, and if I want to look at the activity Dallas has done inside the system, I click View Profile Report. And I could look at all the activity they've done down to uh, the greatest detail, including the files that they've saved inside the system. Uh, so all of that would appear inside the profile summary report. Of course, I can also manage files on Dallas's behalf. If I click on Manage Files, you'll see there's no, been no files that are added. But if I click Choose Files, I can find a file from my desktop, click it, and I have the option to tag it as well. I'm going to call this one Career Fair Reflection. And I'm going to tag similar files like this in my class with the same tag. That way I can run a report later on uh, on, on that student, OK? Uh, I'm sorry, on that tag. Let's close out of this. So you have the option to upload uh, files on the student's behalf. I can also run a report for that individual student. Um, but more likely, what I would do is I would run it for, say, all 26 of the students. I could run a dashboard report. And we'll talk more about reports later and just see the activity that students have done inside the system. 